Uh, good evening. My name is Jeff Cape, and I am the CEO at Evergreen. And it's my privilege to be host to tonight, I suppose, uh, the host, although Walrus is a remarkable organization to work with. So it's been a real privilege uh, to work with all of you and develop uh, this, this particular idea around the future. So if I can bounce to my image. Yes, there we go. My, uh, the, the theme I want to discuss with you today or present to you today is related to the cities. It's the future of cities, uh, something that obviously Mark characterized uh, from his point of view around the Internet of Things. Mine is really around where Canada uh, needs to go as a country in, in just developing its ambition around leadership uh, uh, about future cities for ourselves living in cities, but also uh, as an opportunity to express our leadership globally. Most people think this is what we do well. Most people think we do winter well and we do, we do wide open spaces well, and we do, we do. We've just come through one and we did it well. But uh, we also do this really well. Uh, cities really are the way we define ourselves on the global stage. Canada builds the best cities in the world. Routinely, statistically, we are defined as global leaders in the way we develop our cities. It's the way that we live in cities, it's the values expressed through our policies, it's the governance models, and it's the, the fundamental livability of our cities that, that sets us apart and makes cities livable, vibrant, diverse, uh, economically uh, strong, um, but we don't want to rest on our laurels because uh, at this particular moment in time, the urban agenda globally is a wildly dynamic space. Uh, the movement into cities and the energy being expressed in the form of urbanization around the world right now is, is happening at a breathtaking rate. Uh, most people refer to the moment we're in, the period we're in, as the urban century. Those who are urbanists know that the phenomena of this particular moment in time globally is, is when we've crossed the path from being largely, if not entirely, a rural population globally focused on agriculture to a, to a population globally focused on cities. Over half of the world's population lives in cities, roughly 3.5 billion people. Over the next 50 years, that number will double. We'll see 3.5 billion rise to 7 billion people moving into cities. And Canada's role, the, the nice bubble in red there, is, is, is our little zone. And if we want to protect our zone and, and continue to uh, lead globally, there are a whole bunch of things we need to do as a nation for ourselves living in cities, but also for ourselves as we express a vision for what Canada can represent on the global stage. There are a number of things in motion many of you might have heard of. The Smart City Challenge was announced by the Prime Minister a year ago. Most recently, the 20 finalist cities announced a $300 million carrot, a $300 million awards program announced by the federal government to provoke innovation and creativity in the way we think about and develop our cities. A bold move, a fabulously unique innovation by the federal government to try to provoke cities across Canada to think about the next generation of where they need to go. Many of you have heard here in Toronto how Google and more, more, more specifically Sidewalk Labs has come to Canada and come to Toronto because they see an opportunity to work with our governments and our citizens to develop innovation on our waterfront that's globally unique. The array of people thinking about and talking about innovation and cities is almost endless. Uh, Cisco, a global leader in this space. Uh, IBM, an historical leader in this space, one that's repositioning around this. I could go on. It literally goes on and on and on. Academics, corporations, cities are all positioning themselves in relationship to the single most important issue of our time, in my mind, the way we divine, design our cities to be sustainable, fundamentally sustainable, uh, resilient in the way they respond to the changes that are coming down the, the, the pipe and equitable, where they are inclusive of the multiple uh, issues uh, and multiple agendas in cities. One of the most important projects we're currently advancing inside a program that I mentioned earlier, Future Cities Canada, the lead slide, this launch of a new program of ours, Future Cities Canada, has set out an ambition to try to connect the dots, try to connect the players associated with urban agenda here in Canada. 
In that particular way, the best way to begin is to begin to build a vision for where we need to go as a, as a nation with regards to urban, an urban vision. Believe it or not, between the levels of government in Canada, the number of academic institutions, the array of industry leaders and civic leaders, there is no central vision for what we should do with our cities in Canada. No centralized vision for how we need to develop our future in the most critical issue of our time here in Canada. So our role, we've taken on a leadership role to make sense out of that, coordinate a number of actors across the country and build a vision for where we want Canada's urban agenda to develop over the next 50 years out to Canada's 200th birthday, 2067. Canada builds the best cities in the world today. We want to make sure in 2067 we build the best cities in the world in 50 years. Subjects we'll cover will include housing and how we advance housing issues. Most of you know the crisis we face in every major city. In fact, every major, minor, uh, and, and, and small sound for that matter. Uh, energy, a critical issue for us, whether it's the pricing of energy or the distribution of energy or the production of energy. Mobility, how we move around our cities, fundamental change happening in that space right now. We all know about driverless vehicles, but it goes a lot further than that. And then data, the elephant in the room, quite frankly, that people haven't figured out how to handle. This is a major theme of ours as well. How do we make sense of data, the so-called new oil of our economy? How do we make sense of it so that it protects us as individuals, but also brings economic wealth to Canada? How do we figure this one out? The unique role that Canada wants to play in this space, needs to play in this space, the one that's connected to the values of this nation and quite frankly being driven by Evergreen in relationship to this new initiative of ours in partnership with others, Future Cities Canada, is to fundamentally engage citizens in the conversation and the decision making. City building in the past has been, has been a part of the elite, whether it's political leadership or corporate leadership, designers, planners, it's been an elite exercise. And they're still necessary, of course they're necessary, but we believe the next generation of city building has to involve a much more engaged citizenry in the process of figuring out what we want this place to be, what our children want this place to be. So in this particular building, I'll close out on, on, on two thoughts. Uh, one is that this building is being redeveloped as Canada's innovation hub for future cities. This will be the future city center. We're partway through a construction exercise. We'll keep all the grit and wonderful magic of this space, but this will be a future, the future city center for Canada, a place to bring together academics, industry, governments, and citizens to help make sense out of these chaotic, complex challenges, opportunities for Canada's leaders so look forward to more exercises and activities and fun down here. The farmers market will continue, the, the kids camps will continue, but we'll also have some rigorous debates and discussions in this building. And uh, well, thank you for that. <laughs> and, uh, and I'll end on this one, I mean, just hope. Uh, we have to have hope. We have children, we have grandchildren, we have uh, friends and family who we need to uh, lead for. And so have hope, uh, work hard, and uh, look forward to working with all of you. Thank you.